Hi everybody, Mark Hanna here. A friend of mine asked me to record a video on using defensive fire, some defensive fire principles for ASL. So that's what I'm going to show here using the Vassal module. Uh, on board 48, there's some good places to show how to leave residual firepower, how to use fire lanes, why wall advantage is important in defensive fire, and things like that. So that's what we're going to do. I've set up a scenario situation here. You can see it. Uh, I've got a few defending German units. There's a leader here. Uh, you can see I've exploded the view. This guy here has a light machine gun. I've got a few Russian units coming in. Let's bring in some, a couple more of these here. A couple more squads. Let's put a dangerous... 628 squad over here. There he is. Okay. And yeah. Uh, might need a Russian leader for some reason here. So let's just put one out there just to make this official looking. In fact, we'll put a commissar out. Make this a pre-November 42 scenario. All right, so here we go. So the Russians have set up to do an attack. They're trying to enter this village complex here. And as you can see, um, they're going to try to assault these positions. Let's uh, take a look at what they can do. So the first thing that could happen here, for example, let's talk about fire lanes. Now there's a machine gun here. It's possible, for example, that the Commissar will want to move up here. Now, normally, he would probably go like this, but let's assume that he wants to draw fire. He wants to draw fire from that machine gun. The Germans don't want that Commissar moving any closer, of course, so they'll set a fire lane up here, and a fire lane can be set equal to the lower column down so you've got a five factor machine gun so we put a two factor fire lane here okay then we can rotate that using the vassal controls and when this guy shoots the leader will direct it to prevent cowering cowering happens when you roll the doubles you don't want to roll the doubles when you're trying to set up a fire lane because you put a final fire marker on your units and that will cancel the fire lane. So that's something you want to avoid ideally by using a leader to prevent that from happening. So here we go. So they're going to roll the dice. Here's the roll. I think you can see these rolls. Let me move that over a bit. Okay, here we go. So IFT roll and it's a seven. Okay, so that would have been using, let's just use the Sorry, we're just going to use the support weapon, not the inherent firepower of the squad at this moment. Okay, so the support weapon's first fired. You have to first fire if you're going to lay down a fire lane. You'll notice that the rate of fire on this machine gun is a 2 right there. But uh, when you do a fire lane, you suck up the uh, rate of fire so he doesn't get the rate of fire. He can only just do the regular check. Uh, and then, even if I'd rolled a color 2 and a white 5, he wouldn't keep his rate of fire because he's putting a fire lane down. So, in any event, so this is a 5 firepower attack, minus 2 for moving in the open. Um, I generally use the incremental firepower table. All right. So, anyway, so a 5 on the 5. If you can see this, here's the incremental table. A 5 on the 5 is right there. It's a 1 morale check. Okay, if you can see that. So close that up. Okay. So these guys would take their 1 morale checks. Uh, Commissar would have passed. Commissar raises the level of the morale of this guy to an 8 because it's a Commissar. 1 morale check on him, and he would have passed. All right. Now, if these guys continue to run down this road, 
there's a two firepower residual located in each of these hexes, and it's actually four in this hex. Okay, but this guy would probably say, well, I think I've had enough of that. Okay, I'll run this way, and now this guy might set up a fire lane. But he sees these two guys coming here, so we're just going to let this commissar make it to there. That's two, uh, one, two, four, and this looks like a good place to tuck into for six. Not using any bypass movement here. Okay. All right, so we want to draw this guy's fire so this guy can run forward. So one kind, one thing you could do here is the Russians is move there. Okay. Now, if this guy fires, now first of all, he wasn't marked with a wall advantage counter, so this guy would automatically get wall advantage there, although he's already got the house, but he could take wall advantage if he wanted to. Just for the sake of argument, we'll ignore wall advantage here at the moment. He'll just use the building right there to protect himself. This guy, rather than hold fire for him, he says, well, I don't like that. Uh, I'm going to take a pop shot at him at 8 plus 2. And he rolls a 5, so a 7 on the 8 is a 1 morale check. And he would have broken him. Okay, so this guy breaks. And this one's marked with the first fire marker. Also, you relieve, you put in residual firepower equal to one half of the firepower that you attacked with. Modified by any out of hex TEM. Or, like, for example, the wall. If the guy had used the wall, it would be able to reduce this residual firepower down because it's outside the hex technically. This is one reason why you don't want to forget to put your wall advantage markers on. As I have done before, much to my detriment, uh, it's very easy to forget to put them on in a city, uh, especially if you play the old squad leader and you just don't think about it. You do need to think about it every single time whether you want that wall advantage marker on or off. All right, so I suggest that you do that at the end of every turn. Put those wall advantage markers on when you're allowed to. Uh, we'll talk about that later. You can't actually just do it at the end of your turn. You have to wait to a certain phase, but uh, you'll see what I mean later. Okay, so now this has four residual firepower in it. Okay, but notice that this guy is one hex away from that guy. Okay, so... This guy could run one, two, and even though he's getting closer, he's only two hexes away. This guy is one hex away, precludes him from doing subsequent first fire on this guy running along. Okay, so he could conceivably continue to move. Uh, maybe this guy would shoot at him. But that's one way to pin guys down, is to get somebody closer to them so they can't subsequent first fire. What is subsequent first fire? Well, okay, subsequent first fire is when you guy have a marked with a first fire counter, and he tries to fire again. That's one of the advantages of firing in defensive fires. You get to fire multiple times, whereas in prep fire phase, you can only fire once generally, unless you get rate of fire. So in this particular case, Let's just assume that after he broke this guy, he's like, ooh, I broke him. I'm going to subsequent first fire now. Well, you get to do that with half of your firepower, which is in this case, as you know, four. Okay, and since he's broken, he loses his assault movement uh, protection. So he's treated as if he's non-assault moving. So instead of this being a four plus two for the building, it's only a four plus one. And the subsequent first fire roll is a six. 6 plus 1 is a 7. That's a pin task check on the 4 chart. Won't do anything to a broken unit. Okay. Now, okay, uh, this guy won't be able to subsequent first fire unless this guy moves adjacent to him. Let's go there. 1, 2, 3, and he's going to take that wall advantage. All right. Now, this guy's in trouble. Okay, because... He's got the wall, he's running in at him, and there's no firepower available to suppress this guy. So what's going to happen is, uh, if he really feels threatened, he can try final protective fire. 
Now, that's going to be at a 4. It's again halved from your regular firepower, and it's going to be doubled for proximity as it was before. So that's going to be an, a 4 plus 1 because of the wall advantage. But the problem is when you do final protective fire, it's also a normal morale check. So whatever the result is, let's have a look. Okay, he rolled a 7. So a 7 plus 1 is an 8 on the 4. That's no effect. But because it was also treated as a normal morale check on this 4, 6, 7, he's pinned. Okay, if I'd rolled an 8, he would be broken. So a lot of times you really only want to use final protective fire in dire emergencies, which is basically what it's for. Okay, now let's suppose that this guy had wall advantage and this guy couldn't get it. Then you're looking at a 4 minus 2 on final protective fire, and that's probably a, a much better bet. Let's try that again. A 4 minus 2. Rolling on the chart. Oh! A 12. That's a terrible roll for this guy. First of all, if their ELR is something like a 3, he's exceeded his morale check failure by more than his ELR, which it would be 7 plus 3 equals 10. So he not only breaks, but he's going to reduce himself to a second line squad. Then, because he rolled a 12, it's a casualty morale check. So that reduces him to a half squad, and then after that, he's broken. All right. So, such are the dangers of final protective fire. But, uh, as usual in ASL, it's a risk-reward system. So, you know, this guy took the risk to run up next to him, hoping to cause some kind of catastrophe and in this case he exact, did exactly that. So those are some principles of first fire. Now the residual fire power would still apply in the case that he hadn't broken and actually I'd have to check it might actually still be there if he does break. Don't think so though but in any case you can place residual fire power down when you uh, are final firing. When I say final firing, that would be subsequent first fire flipping your counter over to a final fire marker. Okay, Actual fire, final fire, as it's defined in the ASL system, only occurs in the defensive fire phase. These defensive first fire, subsequent first fire, and final protective fire, all of these occur in the opponent's movement phase when they're coming at you. Okay, So one trick that you can do, let's talk about this guy over here, Okay. Um, let's just say the 628 decides to charge up. He goes 1, 2, 3 into the building. Um, again, we'll just ignore the wall for the purposes of this example. And what's going to happen is uh, he needs to stop this guy from doing something. But um, he doesn't want this guy running up next to him right there. One of the things he could do is do spraying fire because he's got that capacity. As you see, he's got an underlined range value of 6. Underlined range means you can do squad spraying fire at uh, a range of 2 or less. Uh, might be 3 or less. But certainly adjacent, you can do spraying fire. So he will do that. He'd shoot here, spraying fire, and here. Okay, so this would be a 7 plus 1. And then he's firing here, but there's no target, so he'd have to fire area fire at that. So that'd be a 3.5 plus 1. Uh, minus 2, actually, but there's nothing in there to subtract or add to. You're just trying to leave residual firepower. So when he takes the shot, he rolls a 7. A 7 plus 1, uh, let's see, on that chart is a... A pin pass check on the 628. Okay. And away. So, so he'd take a pin pass check. I rolled on the wrong chart, but he passed it. But then this guy didn't cower, so he would leave 7. That goes down to a 4 for residual firepower purposes, so he would leave 2, half of that, which is 2 residual firepower, and he'd be able to leave 1 residual firepower in here. It's three and a half, has to move down to the two chart, and then leave only one residual firepower. But now, if this guy said, well, I don't care, I'm going to go for it anyway, 
and I'm not suggesting this is good ASL tactics, by the way. This is only to demonstrate how this stuff works. So he'd have to take a 1 minus 1, and I roll it, and I rolled a 5, which is a pin task check, so he takes the task check. And he's pinned, yeah, so it worked. The tactic worked. It prevented this guy from uh, messing with me. Now, this guy is marked with a first fire counter, and if he wants to later, he can sustain fire at this guy in the defensive fire phase. If it's defensive fire, we're going to remove all these residuals like this, and now he can do his 7 plus 2 if he uses the machine gun. Okay, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. I just wanted to flip that over. What's going on here? Ah. Here we go. Okay. So he can do a 7 plus 2, but this will be sustained fire, so the machine gun has a breakdown number lowered from 12 down to 10. All right. So we do the 7 plus 2, and it's a 8 again, another uh, pin task check, and he passes. So uh, there's an example of an assault. It wasn't too bad here for the Russians, as you can see. Uh, they've got their commissar in a central position here. This guy's pinned. But this guy's going to uh, move into close combat. Uh, well, first he'll get to advancing fire. He's actually got a 7 plus 2 back, uh, plus 3, because he's in a stone building. And he would do that attack. And he actually cowered, so there's no effect with a, a 6 goes down to a 4. So 7 first goes to the 6 column, then down to the 4 column if you're using the incremental fire table. I always play with the incremental fire table uh, simply because I don't like the gaminess of shooting or not shooting machine guns. That happens all the time if you don't use the incremental table. All right, so um, no effect, so we'd have to go in for the close combat. Close combat phase, we mark them with a close combat marker. All right. Uh, and... Well, I didn't route these guys, but I'm just finishing this up because I want to see what happens. So we do an ambush first. The attacker rolls a 3. The defender rolls a 2. There's no ambush here. They're both normal. Neither of them is stealthy. So then the Russians have a 3 plus 2 on the close combat. And they rolled a... It's not... Sorry. A 3 to 2. And so they rolled a 3. That's going to kill the German squad outright. Rolled a 2. Uh, for the color die, so it doesn't kill the machine gun. And the poor Germans only have a 1 to 2 back, but they succeeded in killing them. So at the end of that, what's left in there is a machine gun. All right? So that's always, that's not necessarily the best trade for the Russians, but usually it's not that bad if you can kill squad for squad as the Russians, you're doing okay. So that's sort of the end of the primer for. Residual firepower, defensive fire, fire lanes. Gives you a pretty good idea of most of the effects of that. Really makes a big difference on the play of the game. So thank you for listening. And we'll see how this video comes out, if it's okay. Not too many distracting noises and other mistakes. I'll send it on up.